Okay, let's cut to the chase. Watching this footage right now, you're wondering why would this beautiful Tommy Mackinnon Evolution need a restoration? Well, at a distance this car does look decent indeed. The car has done 78,000 kilometers, so it's definitely not a low mileage garage queen. But if you look closer, there are many flaws. Most obvious is the poor paint condition. The previous paint job is simply horrendous. You can see many areas with paint defects. As you might expect with this amount of mileage, chips can be seen all over the car, but with some really messy touch-ups. Most of the stickers have seen better days. The most utterly shocking bits are the rear wing stickers. Somebody had masked them, then painted over the stickers, leaving a wildly uneven paint edge. A fifth grade art project would look better than this. The front headlamps had gone all yellowish, and the car came with this nasty aftermarket exhaust. The interior overall is not too bad. We can tell the car had been parked outdoor for some time as the black malure had faded and the steering wheel is also very worn out. So nothing too major and we can definitely give her a makeover. First step is to take all the seats away. Condition is not too bad but we can see some wear on the embroidered lettering. The usual bolster wear on the driver's side but there is a more important issue. Most of the black velour receives so much UV exposure that it has turned purple. So we take the seeds to our local upholstery shop where the plan is to retrim and replace only the black fabric panels and reuse the middle red area. So we select the best stitching and velour color match and leave the guys to do their magic. Back to the shop and we've got all new rubber trims and seals for the bodywork. Ready for the car to receive the infamous Passion Red specifically made for the Evo TME. Once out of the paint booth, the next step is to put the car up on the hoist and get the wheels off. Now we can finally get that hideous aftermarket exhaust out of the way and the undercarriage can get a good detailing, getting rid of all road dirt and grime. Brake calipers receive special attention. Next up, the intercooler. It has a bit of surface oxidation, so we're using some fine steel wool to get rid of it, and the fins will also get a deep cleansing. Low pressure water to rinse off the intercooler, then we can proceed with the high pressure hose for the rest of the underbody. Very gratifying to see the pristine underbody condition being revealed. Lucky for us, we can still buy a brand new catback center section from Mitsubishi. Then, of course, we also purchased all new hardware, gaskets, and rubber hangers. Now, this is a rare find. We have sourced this original muffler all the way from Ireland. The muffler is specific to the TME, as you can tell by the thin metal tip design. Condition is not so good, so we take it to a nearby shop for sandblast, then high heat ceramic coating treatment. They did an awesome job, and the muffler body is like new again. To make it even better, we give the tip a good polishing using some metal wax. Everyone behind the car can now admire the shiny tailpipe. The middle section gets installed first, then comes the muffler. Very simple job using brand new hardware. Would you just look at the result? Absolutely stunning. Next up is engine detailing. A bit of steam plus some degreaser to deep cleanse all areas of the engine bay. We bought a new valve cover and now it's a good time to put it on. The old bonnet insulation pad is coming off, making way for a new one. Remember the old headlamps that had gone all yellowish and hazy? Worry no more, a new set is here and look at the difference between the new versus the old. A few nuts and bolts and the new headlamps are in. The front bumper can now make its way back on. New fender liners are next. 
At this stage, you can see this is a no expense spared project. Whenever we can buy new original parts, we'll go for it. The previous owner had already refurbished the brake calipers and the wheels, so we just need to give them a good detail and polish, then apply a few layers of high heat glass coating. The coating will make future cleaning a lot easier as the glass coating is super water repellent. All the dirty work has been done now, so we're giving the body one more wash to make absolutely sure dirt and debris didn't stick to the paintwork. Wheels are back on, and we can start the paint correction process. Although the paint is new, the clear coat might not be perfectly even and level. A few days of polishing will produce a mirror-like finish, making the red pop and shine like a new car. Now comes the time to apply the iconic stickers onto this TME. The factory stickers already have very good anchor point references. Plus, we're using the original catalog as a second guideline, making sure all the stickers are where the factory intends them to be. Then it's just a matter of using a pair of super steady hands and carefully applying them one by one. Emblems are, of course, new items too. One final sticker is the door jam tire pressure label. Then we apply three layers of nano titanium glass coating to create a rock hard glass barrier on top of the paint. This will protect, plus giving the clear coat a super glossy, candy like depth and shine. Using the IR heat lamp, we speed up the glass coat curing time. Then onto the final few pieces of the puzzle. All the remaining exterior parts can go back onto the car. Exterior is all done now and it's time to tackle the interior. The old steering wheel and other bits of interior trims are on their way out. A bit of vacuuming first to pick up all the dirt and debris. With some carpet cleaner first we scrub down the floor carpet and then onto the hot water extraction to finish the job. It's so much easier to clean the carpet with everything out of the way. A new shift boot is being installed onto the center console, then the rest of the parts can be put back onto the car. The steering wheel has tons of marks and scratches, it's a real eyesore. On top of that, the red color stitching has all faded out and has now turned white. Lucky for us, we have sourced this light new, original steering wheel from Malaysia. A good thorough detail with some steam and cleaner is a must. Now you can see what the original red stitching should look like. Putting them side by side, the new wheel is in so much better condition than the old one. Thank goodness we were able to find this rare item as Mitsubishi no longer sells new TME steering wheels. Right on cue, all the seats are now back from the upholstery shop. They have simply done a stunning job. The lettering on the front seats looks exactly the same as original. The way they retain the red inserts, then so on the new black velour, looks seamless and factory. No more ugly faded purple seats. While we're at it, we're also installing new vapor barriers on all four doors. Yes, you've guessed right. Four new door panels have arrived too. Very simple installation and four more items that will transform the interior. Looking spanking new again. We're almost there now. Spinning on a brand new shift knob feels oddly satisfying. New kick panels just pop on nicely. And here comes the finale to wrap up this project, a rare new set of Rally Art floor mats. Just like that, our Tommy Mackinnon Evo project is finally finished.
is an utter joy to drive this car today. Well, especially this one, as it looks and drives and it smells like a new car. We really hope the next owner will enjoy this as much as we do and appreciate the labor of love that we've given to this gem. It was a decent car by all means, but we've turned a slowly decaying ride into a collector's dream. Hope you've enjoyed this video and see you again soon.